Welcome back. In the last segment, we set up the time discretized equation for linear elastodynamics and also looked at a canonical solution uh, technique for it, right? What I call the A method. We'll get into analysis now. As for the parabolic problem, the analysis is based upon a uh, suitably chosen eigenvalue problem. Okay? Uh, and, and, and the way we carry out this analysis is to use this eigenvalue problem to uh, construct a decomposition of our uh, ODE into um, modes. Okay? So, um, analysis is based on the eigenvalue problem it's based on the following eigenvalue problem Omega, omega square m psi equals k psi, all right? Where omega square you, we recognize to be the natural frequencies, right? Or each omega is a natural frequency. Right, natural frequency of uh, oscillation. Right? In the context of our problem, omegas, each, each omega would be a natural frequency of oscillation. Okay? With this problem in, as, as a basis and then as before proceeding to construct um, M or con proceeding to consider uh, eigenfunctions uh, or eigenvectors psi that are M orthogonal. Right? So the psi's are M orthogonal eigenvectors. Okay? When we do this, right, we, and, and we proceed just as we did for the, uh, for the parabolic problem, right? So we, we, by, by, by doing this, we can now do things like um, saying that any vector, like the d vector, can be constructed through a sum over L, d sup L, psi L, right? Where each psi L is an eigenvector, okay? And these vectors are m orthogonal, okay? I should probably say psi L here, all right? And say that L equals, just as we saw before, one to total number of degrees of freedom in the problem, okay? We do this for D and of course we can do this for every other, uh, for all other vectors that show up in the problem, right? We could do this for V and A and so on, okay? Uh, we take this approach and what we see is that we get, uh, when we take this approach, we get a reduction to NDF, a uh, single degree of freedom, modal problems, right, or modal equations. All right. Now, if we were to go back and write this for the time exact ODE, uh, reduction to NDF single degree of freedom modal equations. Let me just continue here, say of the time exact ODE. All right? And the form of those equations is the following, right? For the time exact ODE now. Remember, this is pretty much the way we did it for the parabolic problem also, right? Remember, we wrote out 
the the reduction for the for the time exact ODE and then extended that to the time discretized ODE. Okay, so for the time exact ODE we would get DL double dot plus two CL omega H L um, D L dot plus omega H square D L equals zero if we consider the homogeneous case, right? Remember the homogeneous case is when we have zero right hand side. Now, uh, omega H L is just reminding us that um, that we have natural frequencies, but those natural frequencies, because they depend upon our matrices, which are obtained by spatial discretization, right? Those natural frequencies also reflect the effect of the spatial discretization. Okay, so these are what we will call the finite dimensional or uh, spatial, uh, spatially discretized. natural frequencies. Okay, just as for the parabolic problem, we considered lambda h sub l, right, which was simply, the, which, which simply was the effect of spatial discretization upon the eigenvalues. Okay, same thing here, right? So that's omega h l and uh, for C sub L, which actually properly should better be written as a C H sub L. Okay, there's an H on that also because that also does reflect the effect of spatial discretization. Okay, C H sub L is simply our, remember the constants we use to define Rayleigh damping? It's those constants divided by the corresponding natural frequencies. Okay, and this is what is called the modal damping ratio. Okay, all right, now the way we proceed with our analysis is the following. Because we have a second order ODE, we, uh, we rewrite our second order ODE using a technique that's very well established in uh, ordinary differential equations. We rewrite it as two first order ODEs, right? So we rewrite the second order ODE as two first order ODEs, all right? And in order to do this, we say that, all right, we are now looking for the solution of a vector, right, with just a two vector, where Y is uh, D and D dot, okay, all right. It's not difficult to rewrite that single second order ODE in terms of this, right. Um, 
And in fact, what we will also do is that as we recall from the case of the parabolic problem, okay, for what we get for the time discretized problem is the following. Right, we get a modal decomposition of the time discretized problem also. Right, in modal form. Okay, and that problem is the following. We get A n plus 1 mod L plus 2 C H sub L omega H sub L V n plus 1 mod L plus omega H um, L square D n plus 1 L, right, where each of these is a modal coefficient, the lth modal coefficient of the corresponding vector, okay. This equals 0 is the homogeneous problem. All right. All right. And now the relations between the modal coefficients between the dn plus one, vn plus one, and an plus one will be satisfied. Those those modal coefficients satisfy the same uh, conditions that we obtain from the Newmark family, right, for the full vectors. Okay. All right. So we get. Newmark family equations relate d n plus 1 at L v, sorry, it is not the vector, right, it is the mode, v n plus 1 at L and a n plus 1 at L, okay, all right. Those are the equations that involve the coefficient, the, uh, the parameters gamma and beta.